What's going on guys? DJ Hats here, CollectiveKicks.com. I have Mr. Shuseum himself in Index PDX right now. He's in Portland, Oregon. What's up guys? Give, uh, give everybody just kind of a little bio on yourselves if they don't know who you are. My name's Jordan Geller. I previously was a seller on eBay. I built the Shoeseum. It's the world's largest sneaker collection. Well, it was before I started selling the collection. It was actually 2,500 pairs of Nikes and Air Jordans. All of them were on display with toys and props, and they really brought the shoes to life. And so I'm here in downtown Portland in Chinatown, and I figured I'd have to stop by the best consignment shop here, and that's Index PDX. It's run by Broke on Jordans back there, tucked away. That's my boy from eBay, also from Nike Talk. So, you know, we go way back with our love of sneakers, and I thought we would check out his store together. Yeah, let's, let's take a look. So over here, what do we have? We got a lot of Nike sportswear stuff. Um, some really cool Air Maxes, some Freeze up top. I love this classic BW. BW stands for big window. It's that big uh -huh. air window right here. The shoe originally came out in 91. I love the old school kicks. I love when they retro the old stuff because I wasn't lucky enough to have these back in 1991. So now to be able to buy it for 100, 150 bucks. So that's crazy, those are called the big windows, but did, did the burst come out after that then? Yeah, the burst okay. was actually the 93? Air Max 94. Oh, 94, The 93 okay. is the first air bubble to go around the heel, 180 degrees, actually 270 degrees. Um, and then the year after that, it was the Airburst. That's awesome. I didn't actually know that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah so, so. so we got some pretty cool Air Maxes here, some 1s, some 90s, 95s. Yeah, back. This is a sleeper right here. This shoe was inspired by the Olympic rings, the various colors of the Olympic rings. It came out in 2004 along with the Olympics. Every time the Olympics come around, Nike will customize a bunch of cool shoes, and they did That's it one of them. with these That's 95s. I love these Agassi shoes over here, the Air Tech Challenge 2. Here's the Pixel Edition. This is the first time they retroed this, just this last year. Yeah. Um, this is the Tarp Clay. Of course, there's the Hot Lava Edition. Those things were retroed before and then again this year. But then they really went crazy with Agassi's signature line. Yeah, those by, are you know, this is the French Open Edition. And these are the colors of the shoes that Agassi wore in the French Open and also his matching outfit. He was really a pioneer with crazy wild tennis shoes and then outfits that matched the tennis shoes. And then right next to Agassi, OG Bo Jackson. It's one of the first cross trainers it's right here. My favorite here. colorways for sure. Yeah, it's uh, the University of Auburn. That's where he went to college, right? I believe I think so. so. Yeah. Um, very cool shoe right here. Bo Jackson really took over the cross trainer line. Originally, the Air Trainer 1 came out in 87, and it was meant for John McEnroe. But then a two-sport athlete came around a couple years later, Bo Jackson with baseball and football, and this was like his first signature shoe. So you got to love it. Yeah, I have that exact colorway. I love it, that one for sure. Some 90s nostalgia right here with some Barclays. I still I love this shoe. They, they kind of butchered the retro with all these crazy colors, but... I still love that model. Yeah, this is like the Dusk Till Dawn edition and it came out with a matching Air More Tempo. Uh, I remember picking these up at the outlet stores. They were 80 bucks and I bought them on a Black Friday, so they were 30% off. It's crazy, like all the shoes that I've ever bought, I could tell you where I bought them, how much I paid for them, how many of them I bought. What, so that's a good question. What What is the, the one shoe that you bought the most quantity of and sold the most like of one specific model? I think it's the Zoom Kobe 1. When that thing originally came out, Nike didn't really know how many to make and they overproduced that shoe. And they were at every outlet, they were $35 and 20% off. So you'd end up getting them for 28 bucks no plus way. tax. They were like $30. And I went crazy on the all black one because I knew it wouldn't yellow or go bad over time. But man, there were like 10 different colors of that shoe. I had a storage locker with Just about... 800 pairs oh my of Zoom Kobe ones, and like at least three or 400 were the, the black Mambas. How much do they, uh, on average, would they sell for? Like I was all about the flip, you know? Like I'd quick. buy the shoe and I wanted to get rid of it, so I'd sell them for 75 bucks. Double up though. Yeah, you know, what I would do is I'd buy a shoe for 30 bucks, I'd sell it for 70, 75, and then I'd go back to the stores and buy two or three shoes. With the same money. Yeah, with the same money and do yeah. it again. And, you know, even though eBay was going to take their fees off of it and UPS for the shipping, just wait to pay the bill so I could just keep rolling on all of the money that I would owe to eBay and the money that I would owe to UPS. And, you know, every day I would hit those outlets and buy hundreds of shoes. That's wild. Let's keep walking. Yeah, let's keep going here. Um, over here, up top. Nike so, basketball. Yeah, like. Nike basketball. 
These are pretty cool. Statue of Liberty shoes right here. It's yeah, the Hyperposite nice. Max. Cool. I like the Statue of Liberty dunks myself. But yeah. Somebody actually, I did a Nike design contest. Somebody did a Statue of Liberty Kobe ID. It, it turned out pretty amazing. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, some KDs right here. This splatter I saw at the outlets for about $59, <laughs> I remember. I love that. I don't really collect KDs. I do have the different what the KDs. I don't have the four, the sample model, but I do have the five and six. One of my favorite exhibits in the shoe museum is the what the dunk collection with a few pairs of what the dunks and all the shoes that made them up. But I also have the what the Kobe's, the what the LeBron's, the what the KD's, the what the trainers. So that's actually a good segue. How do you feel about the new what the Kobe nine elites? I've been I think on the fence. Expensive. Yeah, I've I've had my rants on Twitter here and there about those personally. Two hundred seventy-five bucks, right? Yeah, two seventy-five. And it was supposed to be two twenty-five. And do they look like what the Kobe's? I mean, to me, they just look like Easter shoes. I don't know. It's funny you say that because the first what the Kobe shoe, they didn't really go all out the same way that they did with the next one, but now this most recent one, it's like they regressed yeah. back. Yeah. Um, I think the what the MVP LeBron is maybe the best what the shoe beyond the what the dunks, which are, you know, the OGs. And, and finally, what, how do you feel about the, the idea or concept of having a new uh, what the dunk, like a 2015 version? I was kicking that around with some Twitter followers as well. I was thinking about that and I was thinking, oh man, they're gonna make a what the dunk high. And then I thought, you know what? They might make an all new What the Dunk yeah. with all the cool SBs that have come out since the That's original What the Dunk. Yeah. And they might make that a high. Um, it would be a great idea. It would yeah. sell out for sure. I can think of a whole bunch of really dope SBs that have come out since uh, the What the Dunks came out. So, you know, imagine them putting together something with like the skunks and the Cheech and Chongs. Yeah, and the statue I, I, I think it would be amazing. I'm surprised they haven't done one yet, to be honest. I'm surprised they haven't, considering Nike Basketball has done it every, every year. Since I, like three years ago. Or I years. actually heard that the original What the Dunks were made out of the same excess materials from the Dunks that made them up. Uh, so like the different hemp's, like the Bonsai hemp and the Cascade Blue and the Red Mahogany, the actual hemp upper was the same exact material that they used on those that's lows. That's pretty rad then. Which would have meant that they had the foresight to save the material or to be able to at least go and like get access to it. That's wild. Which is pretty cool. Um, Crazy. Down here we've got all these crazy LeBrons and Kobe's and I think it's really related to this what the conversation that we've been having because now that we're having these what the LeBrons and what the Kobe's and what the KD's, they're really a mishmash of the various LeBrons and Kobe's and KD's that come out and now these guys are playing in a new pair of shoes every game and sometimes even switching it up at halftime. So yeah. they're wearing more than one shoe and that's freaking nuts. When you think about like back in the day, the OGs like there was just a few different colors of the threes and the fours four, and the fives. Yeah, four or five colors. The sixes, it, yeah. you know, and, and now there's like 82 20, game season 30, plus playoffs. 30, 30 release, 40 PEs. <laughs> it's kind so of, it's behind kind of crazy. the glass over here. Yeah, this is the This the is the shrine. Got those Tokyo fives up there, the dunk fans. That's the first hyper dunk that ever came out. Yeah, that when, so when that shoe launched, it launched at undefeated and Kobe Bryant showed up in a DeLorean and was autographing shoes. Did you, you weren't there. You no, didn't get I wasn't there, but I, I saw say. it. It was at undefeated in LA. That's awesome. Um, anyway, let's check out some of these Oregon shoes over here. I'll try to stand by to eliminate the background noise. But yeah, look at those nines and the fours and the threes, another pair of fours. Yeah. Those LeBrons over there. The I'm M and M twos are I'm sick. Do you still have your pair or no? Or do you know you sold yours to uh, perfect pair? I sold my M and M twos and fours to a tattoo artist, and he sold the fours to the perfect pair. Oh, okay. Um, but that shoe right there, there's only 313 yeah. because the area code in Detroit is 313, and it's got the lyrics to the way I am written all over it. Come on over, let's have a look yeah, want, up at it. This is one of those pairs that. Grail status for sure. Thirty two hundred bucks for a ten and a half. It's just like a half size too big for you, man. <laughs> Can't do it. Come back here though. Let's look at this yeah. sample right here. Boom! One of twenty five shoes. This shoe gets me excited. Yes. So it's got the Jumpman on there, and if you recall, for the anniversary edition of the Air Jordan line, the twenty fifth anniversary, they came out with Air Jordan one, two, three, four, nine, eleven, and twenty tens. The 11 was the best, but it didn't come with a Jumpman, and this one has a Jumpman yeah, on there. And very few. Yeah, it's like a unicorn. I've yeah. only ever seen it 
on Dependable J's Instagram. Shout out to Dependable J and also the perfect pair. I mean, these are a couple incredible collectors on Instagram and not every day Dependable J shares a pic, but perfect pair definitely does. And I'm always looking and I'm like, wow, yeah. I can't believe these guys have these shoes. I follow those guys pretty closely as well. Here's this, a very rare 2010. Check out this clear part right here. That's supposed to be Michael Jordan's eyes, the way that he would look through defenders. The window. Yeah, it wasn't like so popular when they came out. Yeah. But, you know, cool story. It's a K54 though, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it makes it a little more rare. What is that, like a French basketball tournament or something yeah. like that? Yeah. Then over here. They didn't have one last year, surprisingly. I'm, I was surprised that they didn't have a release last year. The last one was the, the, uh, the fours, the motor, the military fours. Yeah. And it was just they 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 slapped the logo on the tongue. I actually had a pair of them um, in in my possession, but it was it was a buddy's pair. But yeah. Yeah. It's kind really of rare. hopefully they they make another one eventually. But gotta love that shoe right there. Yeah. Kind of a classic. I'm not a big fan of that or any of the Oregon stuff here. Of course you're not. <laughs> uh, you're a OSU alum. <laughs> This is a sample actually right here. You look at it and at first glance you're like, are those the bright crimsons? But no, yeah. you can see that elephant print right up there in the red. Pretty cool. Actually, I think the bright crimsons are very slept on. And you know, if that shade would have been called infrared, people would have bought it for sure. Yeah. And actually I saw some samples of those before the release where they were they looked different than these ones even and they looked they look legit. Like the, it just was a, a little bit better of a, a colorway. I don't know. I wish it would have came with a candy more. pack right there. I was hoping that somebody would break out the red and green twos from the candy pack for Christmas, but <laughs> nobody's done it yet. I just think that would be amazing, one on each foot. Um, over here, some ones, gotta love that. Looks like the band edition, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, uh, commemorating the Air Jordan 1 being banned, even though it's a myth and it was the airship. And then over here, the bin nine, the best of all the bins. They were supposed to do all the different Air Jordan signature shoes as bins, but they only did the two, the five, the seven, the nine, and the 13. Five I don't know pairs. why they stopped them. That's kind of a bummer. Yeah, I don't know why either. And then some pretty sick LeBrons right these, here. These LeBrons, I don't know what they are, but those are insane. That's the one I would go with right there. LA Clippers colors. In 04, the All-Star game was in LA, but LeBron didn't even make the team. So they issued these shoes, <laughs> but there was no need for them. That's crazy. Yeah, isn't it? We got the perfect. TED Talks or whatever that was. Yeah, that's right. TED PDX. And then over here, what is this like the LeBron or Palmer or the Champ Pack rather? Right? Yeah. yeah. See, I just don't know my LeBrons and that's Kobe's. Okay. They, they make too many of them these yeah, they days. They do, they do. The Nerfs are sick. Yeah. Probably KD's best shoe. One of those ones, they, didn't they pull them when they released? I don't know, was it a trademark the, problem with yeah, the box and the so, Nerf like Paul? That. Wouldn't surprise me. Maybe they were just limited, I don't know. Either which way, I, I didn't get a pair. Some of these Yeezys, I just think it's so overrated. Yeah, so overrated. <laughs> I love the Heineken dunk, love the Supa. The Danny Supa dunk is inspired by the New York Mets and it's the first ever Dunk SB from 2002. Really? Yeah, look at all that puffy padding on there. Actually, something about this shoe, if you look at the upper, they sometimes have too much leather on there and that's where at the toe box, it's like sort of crinkling up like that and that's very common on those Danny Supas. Down here, the Dornbecker phone. Yeah. Didn't you just meet just up with did, this kid? Uh, yeah, just Elijah did Elijah Diggins. Yeah, very cool. Nice guy, huh? Yeah, really cool guy. His dad came over and uh, they both just hung out for a bit and yeah. talked about the wrap of the shoe and just crazy stuff. Come on back over to it for a second. It reminded me of a red version of the Paranorman. Yeah. Um, but what, it was inspired by the Miami Heat or something? Correct, yeah. yeah. And he had a blood disease, so it was kind of like the concept of like a, the, the blood. I like the, the overall design of it. Yeah, and my nice idea was a bit. He said his mom saw the, the ED logo on the back and saw it side or saw it downwards and it looked like a smiley face and so that's the way they actually ended up putting it on the logo. Yeah, I think that that logo is cool. I'm glad he touched yeah. on that. The Galaxy Foams for the All-Star Game in 2011. I mean, that was like freaking crazy. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. And what are these BHM Kobe's or some samples? Something like that. Big stage. See, I just don't know some these more. LeBrons and Kobe's. I'm embarrassing myself. That's right. Right. No. <laughs> this Raging Bull pack, back in the day when I used to be a reseller, I bought 40 of these packs for retail. What? 40 of them. And I had eight of them in my size. And I kept all eight of them and I sold the packs. And I sold the packs for like 450. And I thought it was like pretty quick, deal. 100 bucks per pack. No, and now like freaking the red one's worth like a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's and, insane. You know, funny story about these over here, the 99 fours. 
I was in college in 1999 and the outlet in Tucson, I went to the University of Arizona, and the outlet out there had a full rack of these and a full rack of the black ones for $69.99 and I couldn't <laughs> afford them. And my buddy and I used to go and visit the shoes and like watch them slowly sell. Sell, no way. Yeah, we never even got Back in the day. Um, before we check out that yeah. wall, Got to look at the DB6. This year was the year of the six, the 23rd anniversary of the six, and they made a million of them. They didn't retro this one, fortunately. But I love the Air Force One next to there. It's made out of Anaconda, real gold on there. Tell that, me more about, yeah, tell us more about this one. So that shoe retailed for $2,000 in 2007 as part of the 25th anniversary of the Air Force One. There was also a brown edition that was made out of real crocodile, another $2,000 shoe. They came in a crazy box and case with like a special cleaner and a bag and all that good stuff. The first Nike shoe ever to retail for four figures and it was actually two stacks like this. Jeez man, crazy. that's crazy. Um, over here, some let's, Jordans. Yeah, let's round it up and finish it off here yeah, with let's the Jordan do it. wall. It wouldn't be right to do a video without talking about these two gems right here. I mean, these are just some of the best Air Jordans ever. Yeah, I totally agree. It'll be great when they remaster the line and re-come out with this. And Do you think they'll actually remaster the threes? Because as of right now, we're stuck on no more threes, they said. Oh yeah, but I mean, you know this is yeah. coming out with Nike Air on the back. They're not gonna leave that <laughs> shoe out of the recent retros of everything. Uh -huh. Some ones, gotta love the AJKOs. I'm not such a fan of these more recent Air Jordans, or really even the recent Kobe's. Like, to me, this is like outrageous. These yeah. big, above ankle basketball shoes. I'm not a basketball player, so I can't really talk <laughs> about the performance, but style-wise, not for me. So we, uh, let's, uh, so you have, we all know that the bread 11s are one of your favorites, right? Yep. What, let, let's like round off that top like three or five. Like, what are the other like big ones to you that, that you uh, always, like look for or like like just love. I love the black cement three. I love the black cement and white cement four. Um, I guess the four is called the bread. Yeah. Um, I love the fives, the black and metallic silver fives. I like the black and red ones. I'm all about the OGs, really. Yeah. Um, most of the Air Jordans that I really, really love are the original colors and the one, three, four, five, and six. I'm totally in the same boat. I actually did a video of my top 10, and uh, just recently, my top 10 like most iconic Jordans, and, and you hit up one, just pretty much all of those ones. Yeah. And you know, next year's the year of the seven, and to be honest, it just doesn't do it for me. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's that they removed the air bubble for the seven, and I just wasn't feeling it or what, but <laughs> I don't know, the seven, eight, nine, nothing like yeah. three, four, five. And you know, here's the rest of their Air Jordan wall. Very impressive selection. It's changing up every day and every week. I would definitely check out their website, follow Index PDX on Instagram. I don't think that they do a lot on Twitter. Terrence, do you do a lot on Twitter? <laughs> so keep up with the website. Instagram. Keep up with Instagram. I'll, I'll link the website and the Instagram both in the video for you guys. Good guy, great yeah. shoes, great shop. I want to, I wanted to say thanks to, to Mr. Geller for uh, for meeting me up and, and being part of this video. I appreciate it, man. It's always a pleasure. All right, Thank catch you guys later. Peace, guys.